Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. Now quickly before we start this one off, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what we're going to be doing on the channel in the upcoming week. So Power League unfortunately has kind of fallen off. The season's about 80 days long. And now that everyone that's good has kind of just hit Masters, not a lot of people have been playing. So I can't really make a road to number one series anymore. I can't really get any games in Power League no matter how long I sit in the MM. There's just not enough people to play. So going forward, we're probably going to be doing a level one account to Masters series. I really don't think I can hit Masters. I don't think it's humanly possible with a level one account. But we are going to try my best. I got to get my level one up there. So for now, we're just going to have a couple other videos. That being said, though, let's hop into the games. Let's hop into the top 10. We have a really good top 10 list for you guys today. So let's get in on it and let's show you guys what it is. Now, we're going to be organizing this top 10 off of three tiers. Now, obviously, we're going to go from 10, 9, to 8, whatever, down to number 1. But there are tiers of brawlers. Not all the brawlers is just one spot below or one spot above. There are certain tiers for how good brawlers are. So we're going to be including that in our tier list from now on. So this is going to be our tier 3. So our brawlers that are pretty good, they're not the best, but they are pretty good and pretty solid. And starting this one off at number 10 is going to be Amber. Now, Amber is really good in a lot of different scenarios. It's good against a lot of different brawlers, and it's just fairly good in this meta. Just a very well-rounded brawler. When it came out, it kind of wasn't that good at anything. It was, like, decent at stuff, but it didn't really excel anywhere. Then they overbuffed it and made it the best brawler in the game. And now that it's calmed down, it's kind of just a B to a B plus in basically every single statistical category. It's just a pretty good brawler. It does a good amount of damage. You can do a lot of things with Amber. So this is going to be our number 10. Let's move on to number 9 and let's keep on going. So coming in at number 9, we have Leon. Now, Leon's new gadget is extremely broken, especially in competitive play. Now, with ladder, it's not as broken because it's not as you know, organizes a game. It's kind of, let's just run around, get kills, let's see what happens. But still, it is very good for holding down an area and having, just making them have no clue really where you are. Additionally, Leon's supers and star powers are both really useful. But the reason it has moved up so much in the meta is just the gadget. It used to be kind of like a solo brawler. Maybe you can make a player do something with your invisibility, but now it's really good to hold a lane as well solely because of the new lollipop gadget. So this is going to be our number nine brawler, and it is very definitely taking a big, big, big rise up our list in the last couple weeks. So let's move on to number eight, and let's keep on going. Now coming in at spot number eight is going to be Gene. Now Gene, he's just solid. Gene is always a solid brawler. There was like a two-month phase where Gene maybe, you know, wasn't top 10. It was argued you know arguably just not in the top 10 but it would definitely be in the top 15 or at least top 20 but it's back in the top 10 in spot number eight in our third tier it's just a good brawler you know there's things that counter it sometimes it's not the best brawler on the map but it's just a really good brawler it's the best mid on a very large majority of maps it's good in brawl ball it's good in siege it's good in a lot of different modes it's just a really well-rounded brawler its gadgets pretty underrated it allows you to get out of a lot of certain uh situations gives you extra health if you need it gives you a knockback obviously it's just really good and then the pull obviously just tops it all off the pull is really good but i think what's really underrated about gene is the little spray that you have and how annoying that little spray is if someone is 200 hp or 1000 hp and at max distance you don't even have to aim you can just hit them and slowly chip them down it's really good and then obviously you got that super that's just an absolute menace and just absolutely destroys everything the gene super being you know one of the best things in the game but this is going to be our number eight brawler. So let's keep this list going. Let's move on to number seven and let's show you guys what it is. So coming in at our number seven spot is going to be Crow. Now Crow is just a really good brawler into just about everything. Now there's a couple brawlers that Crow really hard counters, but I think what Crow really specializes in is that it's good against everything. It's good against tanks. It's not gonna necessarily hard counter the tanks, but you annoy the tanks. You constantly chip the tanks. You don't let them regen. It's just pretty good into them. Into range, Crow's pretty good. You can jump on them, get the kills. Into mid-range, same thing. You just kind of just chill, chip away, all that stuff. And then your jump is really good for an assassination or something like that. Now, obviously, the most broken thing about Crow, though, is that Crow gadget. Slowing whoever you hit for five total seconds is just absolutely absurd. 
It probably shouldn't be in the game, but nonetheless it is. It's just a really good brawler basically into every scenario, and that's hard to find in this game. A brawler that rarely gets countered or is good into every scenario. Very similar to Gene, doesn't have too many counters, doesn't have too many things that, you know, really destroy it. But it's going to stay at our number 7 spot because there are a lot of just overpowered brawlers and this isn't necessarily one of the overpowered ones. It's just a really solid brawler. So that being said, we're going to move into our second tier. So let's get into it and let's show you guys the brawlers on that tier. Now coming in at number 6 and the first brawler in our second tier is going to be Primo. Now the second tier is basically just really strong brawlers. Like brawlers that can win you a game that are usually the best brawlers on the map. You know, unless you're playing ladder and, you know, everyone's just playing overpowered comps and the best three brawlers every single game. It is a really strong and dominant brawler. Now, the reason it is number six is because it has a lot of counters. And the fact that it has a lot of counters kind of lowers it. You know, there's like 10 or so brawlers when you're just a primo and you're on lane or facing it, you cannot do anything about it. But the reason why Primo is so high nowadays is because even when you die, like you guys saw right there, I literally just walked up and died, that is charging your super, which is extremely, you know, I'm going to use the word dumb, because it advantages you to die. You get an advantage from hitting shots. Now I'm close to my super, so I can go up and try and make a play. So even if you're getting clapped as Primo, no matter what, you're going to get that Primo, you're going to be, or Primo super, you're going to be able to make a play, and there are not a lot of things that can stop a primo when you jump on it maybe two or three brawlers at most without super and then you need supers with other brawlers to be able to stop it so primo no matter what during a course of a game is going to have its moments the reason that it's not going to be in the top five because it's not as stable as the other five there are going to be times where you're useless as primo and i feel like you can't be useless as a top five brawler so with that being said let's hop into the top five and let's continue the list so coming in at spot number five is going to be sandy now sandy obviously was a pretty good brawler before the new gadget came out, the Sandstorm is just also, uh, just like Gene, one of the best supers in the game. It covers a very large area, and if you want to have the damage, you can have the damage. If you want to have heal, you can have heal. It's really good for a lot of different things. But now it makes Sandy up into this upper class, this tier 2 class, is one of the best brawlers in the game, is the stun gadget. Similar to Crow, it's something that I don't think makes much sense. Like, look at this. I stun two people, and I'm able to easily wipe them basically without even trying just coming out of a bush and hitting a green button it's really simple it's really easy to use and it just helps out a lot especially in competitive play now with ladder where your team isn't so you know functional and you're not really playing together it might not be as good as in ladder but as you guys can see right here it's just basically a guaranteed kill every single time you get that tap so it's going to be our number five brawler it's really good it's good in a lot of different modes against a lot of different brawlers and it has that pierce damage which is really important but let's move on to our top four and let's show you the four brawlers in the game that are somehow better than this one right here. So coming in here at number four, we're going to have Buzz. Now, Buzz is an extremely annoying brawler. If you can get the right matchup with Buzz, you win. It's as simple as that. It's really easy to use, really easy to chain supers, as you guys can see right here. It's pretty simple. Um, the gadget is decent. I don't really like the gadget that much, although it's really good in the terms of it just gives you a super. I don't think the gadget is the greatest because I think the stun is really important. Additionally, the second star power, the one that extends your range, is basically mandatory for this to be the number four brawler um, in the game. If you don't have it, it's going to be maybe top 10, but I feel like you definitely need it to be top four in the game. But anyways, as you guys can see here, Buzz is just an absolute unit. You guys can see we're getting a good matchup. Even Surge counters Buzz, but because we're able to, you know, kind of just pop off, it's up to us. It's not really up to the Surge. Um, how we play but as you guys can see it's just it's such a lethal brawler it's so good I'm just wiggling around you know grappling on people like I'm spider-man it's just such a good brawler and it's so annoying good in a lot of different modes good for a lot of different things but again it's not as stable you guys didn't see that it's not as stable as our top three our top three are good basically into everything good in basically every mode doesn't really get countered and is always you know just basically winning lane so this is going to be our number four. This is probably our most explosive brawler outside of our number one. So we're going to continue the list. Let's move on to the top three. Our last brawler for the second tier is coming up. So let's get into it and let's show you guys what it is. Now coming in at number three and a brawler that I really struggled leaving in tier two is going to be Rico. Now Rico is an absolute goat. 
in this meta. This gadget that it currently has, I don't know why it has it. Again, it's one of the things in the game that probably shouldn't exist and it's probably going to get nerfed when Supercell comes back from vacation. But it is a really, really strong gadget. Rico itself is a really good brawler. The reason I left it as tier number two is because I think it's really high skilled and a lot of people... Um, who are just casual players probably won't be able to just dominate with Rico like pros can, but Rico is so ridiculously strong right now. In the hands of a really strong mechanical player, there's basically nothing you can do against a Rico. It just holds lane so easily, there's nothing really that counters it outside of throwers, but even throwers, you can kind of just heal up when they get in the way. Um, it's just so strong, as you guys can see right here, anyone that goes on my lane kind of just gets folded, the safe is getting folded, it's just, it's so strong, and if you're ever low, you just pop that gadget and you have full HP again. It doesn't really make much sense, but it's good in every mode. It's good into basically every brawler. It's very strong, so this is going to be our number three brawler and the final brawler for our second tier. If I was just ranking it by competitive gameplay, I would definitely make this probably the number two brawler or maybe the number three, but definitely in the first tier. But since I got a factor in the casuals, it's going to stay in that second tier. So let's move into the top two, our tier number one, and show you guys the two best brawlers in the game. So coming in at number two, we have Bell. Now the reason Bell is number two is because it is good into everything. I mean, it has a counter. Its counter is Piper. But even Piper, the only reason it counters is because of Piper's curveball. And the only way it counters is if Bell doesn't have the shield activated at that time. If it has the shield, it doesn't even counter. Bell is such a good brawler. It is good into literally everything. Now, if there's a sprout and walls, okay, it's not good into that. But outside of that, it's it's just good into everything. It's such a safe pick. Very few brawlers actually give it a hard time. You can kind of just walk around and auto aim with it. You don't even have to aim that much. It has a lot of range, so you don't really have to go close to high DPS brawlers. You can keep your distance. You can play it as mid. You can play it as lane. You can play it in brawl ball. You can play it in heist. You can play it in Siege to defend the bot. Obviously, it's currently in the game the best bot defense at the moment. Like, you could just play it in everything. You can play it in Bounty. There's not a single scenario in which you can't play Bell. And that's what makes it so good. That it's overpowered and you can play it in every single situation. Now, it can be beat. The number one brawler in the right hands cannot be beat. But this brawler can be beat if you just outskill your opponent. There's not really a brawler that can out, you know damage it or counter it too hard outside of piper but the next brawler you can't really outskill if you are if sometimes you're just screwed when, with this next brawler and i feel like you guys definitely know what it is so let's move into the number one and let's show you guys what the best brawler in brawl stars is so coming in at number one we have Stu. now i am not the greatest Stu in the world because i have czar on my team and there's no reason for me to play Stu. But this brawler, like, it's just not fair. I, If there is a brawler that you're playing and you're facing a stew and you don't counter that stew, you lose. It's as simple as that. You just lose. Stew is such a good brawler. Both gadgets, both star powers. You just move so fast. You do everything so fast. You dash around. It's just so crazy what you can do with stew. It's unbelievable. It is such a good brawler. And... It's, it's just the best in the game. You can just 3v1 with Stu in some in some scenarios. And you're not, you guys aren't going to see it here because you guys can see you have Sandy Jean, which are two really strong, you know, decent brawlers in this current meta, both in the top 10. Then you have M's, which is also pretty good against Stu. But I mean, Stu is just a unit. It's an absolute beast. You guys are going to see it from the gameplay right here because I'm an awful Stu. My Stu is like 400 trophies. But... You know, Stu, it's just a good brawler. There's nothing really more to say about it. It dominates a lot of games. It causes a lot of havoc. Even though I'm dying, like, I'm the reason they didn't score. I just dashed up, auto-aimed, pushed the ball forward. It's just impossible to beat a Stu unless you have the counter. Now, the thing with Stu is it does actually have counters. Like, something like Spike counters it. Surge technically counters it. Um, Tara counters it. There are brawlers that definitely counter it. But either way, I mean, this brawler is just an absolute beast. I would highly recommend playing it, getting good at it, anything like that. But that is going to be it, and this is going to be our number one brawler. So if you guys enjoyed the video, leave the like, or don't leave a, the like, but hit the like button, subscribe, you know, all that. Again, I would love to get into more new series. I know you guys really like Power League, and I want to make a way that I can get to playing Power League. But unfortunately, there's just no way of me playing my Masters account right now, either of them. So I can't really do that. 
that's going to be it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that. And I will see you guys hopefully again tomorrow. I will see you guys then. Peace.